Hey guys, it's Slumming Rush. Today I have a brilliant game for you played by Susu Cuba PL in his 7032. This is the double barreled tier 8 Russian premium tank that just got introduced into the game. And normally I don't show games in brand new tanks, and that's typically because I'm not interested in them. This one, however, I watched it and it's absolutely phenomenal. I really thought this was a great game. So he's on the map Pilsen. Now, Pilsen's a really good map for heavy tanks, especially something like this, because if you look at the front of this vehicle, it's really doesn't, it doesn't have a pike nose. And a lot of Russian heavies do have the pike nose, and they suffer on a map like this, because what happens is when you're driving around corners, the pike nose is always going to show flat to whoever you're engaging in, so it's actually really easy for them to kill you. So on a map like this, he's in the 703, it's very easy for him to utilize his armor, and like, you know, it's not his fault, he got on Pilsen and the enemy were really bad, so he had an epic game, but this is like a great situation for this vehicle. Now, as far as this vehicle goes, I don't I don't know a lot of about it. I don't really know how its DPM compares to other tier 8 tanks like at all. However, what I'd expect is because this vehicle is able to fire two shells at once, giving it basically 800 alpha damage, it's going to have really bad DPM. And I think that's what he experiences when he goes to the city. Like something like an IS-3, I think reloads faster than this thing. So I don't know. Go check it out. Make sure you're on, you know this before fighting this type of vehicle. But I suspect that this is the type of vehicle where you could take advantage of the fact that it's basically all alpha and no DPM. So he's pushing in. So he's come to the one line on this side of the map. Now the one, oh, first of all, look at that shot. He aims for the side of the tiger's turret, hits the Oni and the tiger by unleashing both of the shells. Fucking incredible. However, he's up here and this is a really aggressive play for this map. So normally you wouldn't really want to do this in a single tier 8 tank. However, he's in a platoon and because he's up here with the TS-5, this becomes a really strong play. Now there's a tiger in front of him. He puts his shot into the tiger. I think that's a reasonable shot to take. And from here, he's got to worry about so many angles. There's a KV-3 in the mid, and you can see because no one's over here challenging the KV-3, the KV-3 is able to get away with this. And what could potentially be a problem for Susu being in this position is an enemy player pushing up the one line. If you look at who's supporting him, like as he's trading shots with these guys in front of him, it's very likely that Susu gets flanked because there's literally no one in D1, and that's why this position is really precarious. Now, he's able to poke on this IS, and a lot of them are having really difficult time aiming at him and the TS-5. They're just not really able to pen him at all. And that's partly because of the flank. He's not in a piked nose Russian heavy, and so he's able to just kind of drive out, angling his armor. And, you know, for example, I think that got lucky that it didn't pen, but most of these guys are going to have a really difficult time penning his vehicle. And because of that, he's able to just shoot the second he reloads his gun. So he misses a shot on the 50 TP. That's okay, though. The IS is kind of giving him his lower plate. I'm surprised he didn't take that shot. I definitely would have. And from here, he's going to push into a crossfire. So this is the first m mistake that I would kind of say he's making. He's being too aggressive right now. He's got the 50 TP in front of him. This is definitely the right call not to shoot the shots at the 50 TP. However, as he pushes in, he notices a King Tiger behind him, so fantastic situational awareness, but you know, this is basic tactics. You don't want to push through here if there's a tank on this side and this side, like it's just not going to work. So he pushes into the King Tiger, and normally what if I was in this vehicle, what I would suggest you do is don't shoot both your shots immediately, and you can see he's going to shoot both his shots into this King Tiger, and this works because he's in a one-on-one, -on -one, but I would say save your... Uh, shells until the person becomes a two shot so that you can kill him by unloading both because it's always nice to have that extra so it's like if you find someone don't just shoot both your shots immediately wait until the until you can kill them with both shots to do that so that way you always have an extra shell just in case you need it so the tiger whatever the fuck it is dies the kv3 then yolos him because he had the opportunity to and that's part of the problem with being this aggressive but it worked out because he had a platoon mate and he's able to put a shot into the kv3 the kv3 is definitely going to die to the ts5 in a couple seconds here he does and now <laughs> like he's up to 3500 damage and the score is a tie he's going to poke on the tiger this like every single time he reloads he gets a shot and this is exactly the situation you want to be in a tier 8 heavy but it works so he puts a shot into the tiger now the enemy only has three tanks left on this side of the map but if you look at his team they're all really far behind him like these guys are full hp but because susu is being so aggressive he's able to get all the damage so once again he's in a situation where he kind of has to push into a crossfire and this is the way the map is designed at this point the only other option he's faced with is really going around the side of the map. So he tries to put two shots into the 50 TP. Now those don't go in. I think that's because he's got really inconsistent ping. If you notice, sometimes he's at 70 and sometimes he's at 200. And so he misses two shots. I think 
it would have been better to take one, and that's often a safer strategy. Like, just keep the DPM up, always keep the two shells. However, I think Mo that main missed, the reason that missed was because of his ping. So, he's in this situation where he's reloading, he's suffering with the DPM, he's got a really good shot on this 53 TP. Luckily, that one goes in. And now he's kind of in a situation where he's down to 900 HP, he's up to 4.2k damage, and his low HP TS5 platoon mate decides to lead the charge into the city. So, this is rough. If you're doing this play, what you'd want to do is you'd want to do exactly what he's doing right here. So Susu's pushing to the right to make sure the 53 TP doesn't kill his platoon mate. He's almost got the two shells loaded. He gets them loaded and he's taking a bit to aim here. And I think that's just because his ping is inconsistent. He's able to dump both shells into the 50 TP and that guy is dead and he's up to 4.6 K damage. So the next question is how do you deal with this situation? Because he's won the city and the enemy team has won the field. So most players in this game would go back to base. But if you watch Susu, so who he, he, he actually doesn't he shoots the wall that's the right tactical play right here is distract the enemies by making them think you're bad no <laughs> i think that's great he decides not to go back to base i actually don't know why but you're gonna see it kind of works out for him so he pokes up here and he gets shot by a super hellcat so he's just trying to find the location of the super hellcat based on where he got shot from he takes a really decent guess and this is really good he puts both shots into this area and i think if you watch he's gonna put both shots where he thinks the super hellcat is and if those went in that's exactly what he'd want so I think that's how you do that he's reloading now it's fine he's not engaging anyone and now he has to look for targets so who's he going to engage they only have TDs left and realistically what you'd expect is you'd expect a lot of their TDs to kind of be up here pushing into your base and that's for whatever reason he doesn't expect that so I don't really understand the logic behind this play I think going back to base at this point in time would be the better play and you can see my prediction was, I, I don't remember this at all from this replay, but you can see that was basically what happened. So the Super Hellcat, instead of getting on cap, pushed through, which is great for Susu because he's able to pick up the kill. And now I think if he was to just be aggressive against this IS, that would be very successful. However, he's in a decent position. He's waiting for the IS to come. He shoots really early. I don't understand. Like, it makes no sense to me. However, he's got the second shell. And it's unfortunate that he wasn't able to take that shot right there. So the eyes puts one into him, it doesn't pen. Interestingly enough, like it's, it seems to be that a lot of tanks with 175 pen, and you can see that was actually with AP, have extreme difficulty penning this tank. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're playing this vehicle, is you can often challenge a lot of tier 8 vehicles. So what he's doing is he's crossing. Now this is very aggressive and you can see like that's why the SU probably went something like this into the mid and was looking for shots and people from there so he puts a shot into the scorpion g he's got a full hp su 130 pm to his right and a full hp is so in this type of fight what do you have to do well i would think he could push um no, that would be stupid, actually. What, I think he's making the right play right here, because what's happening is he's got the SU to his right, puts a shot into the IS, the IS falls back, and now he tries to drive forward, doing what I said would have been the bad play. So his goal here, I think, was to push the IS, and that would be a decent play, because what could happen is if you push the IS, you could just get him out of the fight with your two shots. Like, that guy would die pretty much most of the time. And, you know, he was trying to do that, but the SU decided not to try to flank, and that's why that play got screwed over. So... The 703, like, Susu's aware that the SU might try to flank, and the SU's not spotted right now, and so he makes a really good call. I don't think I would have made this call if I was in this game. I would have assumed the SU would have just stuck it out here, trying to look for shots on me, and he's camping this angle, looking for shots on the SU. Now, the way he's playing this angle is a bit weird, and he notices there's a super hellcat behind him. There's nothing he can do about it, and so he continues to focus this SU-130. I think if he got closer to this corner, it would be better for him, but this is still a solid play, and you can see he absolutely predicts what that SU-130 was going to do. So that was a phenomenal prediction by him on his part you can see the su-130 bounces both so in hindsight it would have been better if he shot both shells but he made the right play right here i think and uh really good that the su bounced so now he's getting pushed from three angles so this position's good because he's already safe the problem is he's got basically everyone coming in from multiple different directions so he's, he's getting pushed by the su-130 and that's a great play by the su-130 but the su-130 fucking misses i don't know how and he's just gonna let these he's gonna <laughs> That poor SU-130, man. I don't know why the SU-130 decided to YOLO. He could have just played it intelligently and won his team the game. But Susu gets lucky. He's able to kill the SU-130. Then the Super Hellcat. Now there's this, like, 700 HP IS in front of him. And the IS is a two-shot. So, you know, this tank can deal with him once he's fully loaded. So he's got eight seconds left on his reload. The IS is right here. And he's not going to take the risk. I really like this play against the IS. It's the IS, first of all, isn't going to poke, which is smart from the IS. But 
uh, Susu's decision not to just YOLO the IS and take the hit. The IS has 390 alpha, he's got 423 HP, so it's possible that the IS high rolls him, and even if the IS didn't high roll him, he'd die to Artie. So what he's doing is he's co coordinating with his platoon mate, and he's going to look around this corner. So once the IS kind of is shown to look away, that's when Susu's going to poke, and this is absolutely what he should be doing. Playing it safe, making sure he gets the win, and you can see once the IS looks away, he's able to get a shot into him. The IS bounces, luckily, with that one right there, and the TS5 on his he misses but he's got the second shell ready to go that's the last actual tank that dies on this map and now he has to go for Artie so normally I'd skip through the Artie but this is so important because he's a two shot to Artie if Artie hits him it's going to be 200 damage and his teammates a one shot so it's very possible that there's an Artie in this area right here and what that Artie might do is he might sit in a bush kind of on this ridge line or whatever you can't see the ridge line right now but this ridge line right here spots Susu pushing in and then gets Susu kind of killed by the Artie and so that's actually really possible and you have to be careful in this type of situation so Susu doesn't give a fuck he's not being careful at all he's just driving into where he thinks the Artie in is I think this is a really not a good play he's played but I want to mention he's done very well up to this point. I just think YOLOing the Artie the way he is, is bad. I would say generally speaking, it's actually better to get on cap because Artie players don't run Binox on their Artie and generally speaking, they won't have the range to spot you if you got on cap. So he comes up to here looking for Artie. Does he find the Artie? Yes. And the Artie's way at the back, not ready for it at all. And he's able to get the kill. So that's up to 7K. And at this point he's won the game. So he's just gonna drive forwards, finds the S51. And he's gotta make this shot if he wants the Radley Walters. The Artie stuns him. It looks like his platoon mate is letting him get the Radleys right here no he doesn't what the hell why didn't the platoon mate let that happen he gets the shot luckily well stunned he manages to kill the last of the clickers and i thought that was a brilliant game i thought it was very aggressive and it's super impressive how he got all his damage on one flank like normally in this type of game if you want to get this type of damage in a tier 8 tank you have to win the two line for yourself and then you have to go back to base and try to fight it out from a5 because normally they'll cap you out and shit so that didn't happen he definitely got lucky with this but he also played it really well and i liked how aggressively he played with his platoon mate that's ultimately why this was a win all right, so here are the results. He ended up getting 272,000 credits, 9,248 XP. That was a mastery badge. All the fucking medals in the game, pretty much. You got 7,771 damage, eight kills. None of his team did damage at all. I don't think it was because his team was bad. I think it's because they were passive and he was in the front lines able to steal all the damage away from them. So that's why he did so well in this game. That's why I featured it. 158,000 credit profit. <laughs> Look at all the um, all the credits he spent on ammunition and consumables. Holy Holy shit, that took a lot away from his game. However, it was phenomenal. I thought he played really well. I hope you enjoyed watching a replay. Normally I don't feature replays on my channel. This one I really liked. I hope you enjoyed as I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye for now.